So, uh, a couple of words about uh, Spooky House Studios. Uh, this is a game making uh, company that my friends and I started in uh, 2010. Uh, the idea was to be independent, to do what we all love to do, make, game, make games, and to see what will it become. Right now we are six developers, they're all here. Uh, one artist and a business manager, and we produce games in-house and uh, do self-publishing. Uh, for a startup company, a good strategy is to make uh, small games with the simple mechanics that uh, don't take uh, much resources to build and a lot of time to balance. Uh, the, the kind of games that uh, two developers can make in a couple of months. So uh, this is how we started. In uh, conditions of limited resources, uh, you want to perform as, uh, as efficient as you can. And uh, for us, this means to prototype uh, games fast, uh, do play testing, and uh, release uh, only those games that are worth it, and to reject uh, and discard uh, the further development of the other ones. Uh, this is, uh, th uh, all this you can understand uh, when prototyping a game, and if it doesn't worth it, uh, we, you, it there is no need to spend uh, money and time to to develop it, uh, better to spend it on, uh, on the other projects. And this is uh, very essential as uh, it happens quite fast, uh, quite often, that uh, game ideas that you plan to develop are just uh, released by someone else. And that's uh, sad. We also practice uh, everyday uh, meetings in our company to review and monitor the game, uh, the progress of development and to um, set priorities on the projects that are uh, faster to release. Uh, another good practice uh, are idea meetings. That's the, my favorite. It's a weekly meeting of all of the team to share their ideas for new games and also the way to, for all of the team to participate in uh, game design. And you cannot, uh, cannot opt out of it. Uh, those with no ideas will be punished. Uh, in these meetings, we pick the uh, most promising games uh, and discard the others. Uh, so for the first um, few years, uh, we have been making like a couple of games, two, three, yearly, and uh, then updating the, uh, the existing games with new features. At a certain moment, uh, we have realized that uh, it takes uh, ages to make, uh, create new games because all the time we spend on uh, updating the, the existing games. And this is due to the fact that most of the projects uh, require to do some time-consuming tasks uh, that, like building UI or uh, integrating um, external SDKs. Uh, then we have spent some time to build a template, like a template project that will um, be content independent and uh, very easy to manage. So now all our new games uh, share a UI structure, and we can have uh, all needed SDKs um, uh, preset with the per project uh, parameters. And once we did this, the performance, uh, the productivity growth um, was like uh, five, 400 percent uh, more with number of titles that we released in last year over 12. That's a pretty good result for us. Uh, yeah, here on the left uh, is a monstrous machine that I used to play being a kid uh, with a whole lot of buttons, and uh, I don't know even what all of them do. But uh, right now, we use uh, much uh, more limited uh, devices in input, but uh, it's still very fun to play uh, one-button games, and we all know know this. Uh, and that's a great uh, thing about uh, small games, that y you can uh, play them almost on anything. Uh, once I, <laughs> I even used to play my DSLR camera for a snake game. Uh, in 2014, uh, world entered a new era of uh, wearable devices. This is a very new and, uh, in my opinion, uh, promising market. Uh, right now it's very small, but I believe uh, in a couple of years it, it will explode. And since uh, these uh, devices are OpenGL enabled and uh, running native C++ code, uh, we 
this led us to build all our games uh, for Android watches, smart watches, right away. The main task to do here was to fit a game, game screen and gameplay into this squared, uh, small uh, or round uh, screen form factor. Our Android uh, Wear games uh, have become quite popular, and uh, we right now we have uh, about 60k of downloads, 60,000 uh, 60, downloads uh, by now. That's uh, quite a good result uh, for just a few months. Uh, <coughs> Sorry. As you can see here, all our games on uh, Android smartwatches are free. Uh, we have no way right now to monetize them, but um, maybe soon the platform will uh, change this and we publishers will start making money on it. And actually, I, uh, I pray every day that uh, soon uh, will be available on Apple, so much weighted Apple smartwatch. We already have all the content uh, for it, but the main question is uh, whether or not will they support uh, OpenGL. Hopefully it will. Uh, as, as I promised, uh, here are a couple of success stories from Spooky House Studios. The first one is Bubble Explode. It's our first, very first game. Uh, it's a simple bubbing, bubble popping game with the slick animations and uh, relaxing ambience. We, have, uh, we haven't waited uh, much from this game. It was like uh, our test project. We just wanted to see if uh, our small team of two developers can uh, pass through all the process of game making, starting with the game idea and ending with uh, releasing it to the App Store. It took us a couple of months uh, to build it, uh, balance the gameplay and uh, uh, much work has been done to uh, make the game feel, uh, ha to have a very great uh, look and feel. And suddenly, uh, it uh, started to grow very fast in charts, uh, and uh, the next day after release, uh, I really recall this uh, weekend being uh, outside of the city on a picnic, having no monitoring tools. And then Monday, when I came back to, to the office, the game was uh, top one in several markets. That was unbelievable. The mar uh, markets like uh, Germany and Russia. And in a couple of uh, days, uh, it reached uh, top five free apps, all o almost uh, all, all, all of the other countries, except uh, US, Canada. In these uh, markets, uh, the initial visibility was not enough to start organic uh, growth. So we had to, to do some burst promotions, but it was worth it. The second story is Doodle Train, the very funny uh, rail puzzle game where a user controls the, rail, the rails in front of the moving trail uh, train. Uh, the train, this, uh, this train never stops. The art uh, for this game we used uh, in style of doodle, so-called. Uh, the game has uh, over 100 uh, puzzles. Uh, some of them are pretty tricky. Uh, during uh, playtesting, we, uh, we had uh, very great feedback. Uh, all the users uh, liked it and enjoyed the game. It was easy to play and very addictive. However, our, our expectations uh, were far too optimistic and the game failed. Uh, it didn't hit any charts in the App Store. That was sad, and we have almost gave up with this game. Uh, but after a while, we decided to give Doodle Train another chance, a second chance. Uh, having collected all the analytics, uh, we found that the problem was not wasn't uh, in the design of the game. Um, the it was uh, pretty successful. It could be that uh, the problem was in its uh, look and feel. And um, our new graphic artist uh, has changed all the um, art in the game. We have uh, made a new icon and uh, brainstormed a new game, uh, a new game name. Uh, to, uh, also, we have, uh, I guess, optimized uh, difficulty curve. So the new game was Rail Maze. Uh, it's the very same game with the same content. And it became one of uh, our second big title uh, with over 15 uh, million downloads all over the world. 
and uh, we released it on different platforms, including, uh, I guess, BlackBerry, Playbook, <laughs> iOS, and uh, Android, of course. Uh, like uh, Bubble Explode, RailMaze has hit uh, top charts uh, in the very first uh, week after launch. Uh, the, uh, the game started to, uh, the game, game uh, appeared to have a great virality, and all we needed uh, to do was uh, to push it to some threshold position in uh, App Store charts where it uh, can start uh, to grow organically. So there are some questions that I, um, I've, uh, people uh, ask me sometimes, uh, the, the, the most frequent, frequent here. I would like to anticipate them. Uh, paid games or free to play? Uh, we haven't seen much success with uh, paid games. We, uh, at the beginning, we, we did, uh, uh, for every game, we had uh, also a paid title, which didn't perform very, very well. Uh, much better it was to have uh, one box uh, in-app purchase that to, to get rid of all the ads in the game. So uh, right now we use only the free-to-play uh, game um, concept, and I think uh, it's worth it. Um, for monetiza monetization, our main uh, uh, main monetization source is publishing ads. Some of our games uh, let users to buy in-app items, but this, uh, this has uh, to be very well balanced and uh, uh, did not uh, do very well for us. Uh, making games uh, very fun uh, affects se session length and uh, increase uh, the Im uh, impressions number, and this, uh, this is what we love to do, actually. Uh, how do you cross-platform? For cross cross-platforming, we use um, uh, C++ and we write native code that it can be built on uh, most of the today's uh, popular uh, platforms. And uh, luckily, um, we have uh, built even uh, we have this built in, in uh, iOS, Android, uh, BlackBerry Playbook, uh, Amazon Kindle Fire, and many others. Uh, so uh, for Graphic engine, we use uh, so-called Irlicht. Uh, it's uh, not very popular, but uh, quite performing uh, game uh, 3D engine. And that this is pretty much it. So now uh, I think I'm done with it, and I can uh, have your questions. Can you share um, a typical, not the exact figure, but the revenue for uh, maybe a game that goes, like if you have one million player, how many, uh, how, how much do you get from, uh, from mm, a successful I game or a less, I don't know, share some. Uh, well, f first of all, I cannot uh, share with you such information, but uh, it really depends on the game. Uh, some can perform very well. Uh, it, you, you can't say exactly numbers for, for any game. It could be, I don't know, from thousand dollars to millions. Uh, nobody knows. Yes. Uh, what was the statistics that made you realize that you have to change um, game about trains? I don't remember the name. That uh, that was uh, quite um, an, uh, analytically d uh, deducted. That we had a uh, very good feedback. All the users that we give to play uh, they they said it's a cool game I like it uh, it was addictive uh, fun and interesting but uh, it didn't perform uh, uh, very well in charts so we thought it could be that people initially do not install the game maybe the, because at first what you, what people see in the app store is a game icon and the game name so changing this uh, has uh, uh, really worked uh, for us was there questions? I got one. Yes. Um, do you keep updating your other games, or you always move forward to a new title? We keep updating the the big titles. Uh, pretty often, uh, we have uh, over twenty and uh, updates uh, for Bubble Explode, and maybe uh, the same for Rail Maze. So yes, uh, the an the answer is yes, and we add uh, features uh, time to time. 
uh, it works because uh, people get bored of your game. They want uh, to see something new or maybe uh, Apple release uh, new devices every time that uh, support uh, better animations, better resolutions. So you have also to, to keep tracking this and to react. You, you don't want a low resolution game on a new big screen, right? Right. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you.